did they are transformed they have different so fruits and actions so a woman is obliged to date a former f- she like, doesn't have to no, right There's and an so a man doesn't have to no one's no saying one's that Brian. that's what you're arguing no one's saying. that's what you're arguing that's not the argument the that, is, no one no ever said, said that, that. I'm, I'm actually standing for you and saying no you don't have to date her the like, thing is you can oh, be forgiven okay. for your yeah sin. Next <laughs> no one's yeah. Like, what are you I don't know what the argument is here we're all agreeing the bible's very no but I literally said we're just trying to have to like disagree for content hold on but when I said Men do not need to then disregard their baggage and marry them. Y'all were like, no, what did you do that? No, they were just no, saying we that Christians just, yeah. would probably Come on, Maddie. Yeah, more here's, yes, like, yeah. Your, yeah. your sins are washed away, but the consequences of yeah. them are not. You still, you still and there's do worldly, you there are worldly so. consequences yeah, exactly. to the things that you do. Yeah. This idea of born-again virgin is complete prattle. It's completely unbiblical. Prattle. It's made the fuck up. <laughs> Unblibbly. Yeah, I don't think anyone said that. I don't think anyone said that. There is no place. You did say born again. No, no. Yes, uh, I personally did not. I never born said again, born again virgin. Born again. You Those guys got the born again virgin like as like a joke or whatever. But like spiritually, yeah. Anything, any, I take born again. Virgin anything that I've done. Yeah, none of us have referenced <laughs> that. No, no sexually, no. any drugs I took in the past, huh? any any things, anything that I was involved with, huh? it, it's not in my life anymore. And so, if a man, a Christian man, a Christian man were to come to my life and look at my past and be like. Oh yeah, you know you do have the fruits of the spirit now. Your life has changed. Your actions are changed now. But you did that ten years ago. I don't want to be with you. I would dare to argue that that's not a true Christian man because a true no Christian bullshit. That's bullshit. That's exactly lies. Okay. yeah. That's what that's they're arguing against. You cannot and go ahead and try. I can't wait to hear this. Okay, you know why what? don't you go ahead I'll take and it try back. to I'll justify take it why could be, it is he that could a, be a man Christian man who I'll is take... a hang on a man has held his entire life celibate, let's say, and he's devoted his life to God. And he wants to get married and have a nice family. And he goes to you and he finds out that you fucked a hundred dudes and Look. you're on camera getting gang banged. Can okay, you explain whoa, to me? Wow. Let's just assume that it. We're assuming it for the that's sake not of true. Extreme. That's example. not true, by the way. Not saying make that. you did. Okay. Not saying you did. I just want to make that clear. I'm saying for the purpose of the hypothetical. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's you got gang banged by a hundred dudes. It's on camera, right? They're jizzing all over your face, okay. right? They're having a great is, time with so, you. So let's so say vulgar. in this hypothetical. This man, you're saying, is not Christian no, because I'll take he that says, back. look, I don't want to marry a woman who has that background. So so I would say he's not, he doesn't have to take me as his wife. He doesn't choose to. He doesn't choose to. But I would say someone that's equally yoked as, as I, because I could date an ex-gang member that's been with X, Y, and Z, probably even has a, a daughter or a, a son because... We're born again. We have a new life in Christ. We we have a future and hope in Christ. That the past is the past, and oh. God, the Holy Spirit has the ability to redeem you and to transform your minds, your habits, everything. And so I don't but, disagree with that. But if I if if me, I'm like you know what, I don't want to be with him because of X, Y, and Z. That's my choice, and does whatever. Same thing with the man. Well, let's let's back up and see if this actually uh, logically pans out here. Let's assume that this man is with you and doesn't know anything about your past. Okay. You're extremely devout. He adores you. He thinks you're great in every conceivable way. He knows for sure that you are pious, that you love the Lord, and he loves the Lord as well. Okay. Okay? Then one day he's scrolling on YouTube and he finds a, you know, just a, or not YouTube, but wherever, and there's mm-hmm. a picture that pops up. Maybe somebody DMs it to him, and it shows you getting gangbanged by 50 guys. Mm-hmm. And he goes to you and he's like, Look, honey, yes, I agree that you're a Christian. I agree that spiritually you are epic. But I do not want to marry a woman who has been gangbanged by 50 dudes. Right. Then he is would he have... Doing, hang on. Is he doing anything wrong? Uh, technically, no. He could have that... No. He, he could have... He could make that decision. But what I'm saying is that even in that situation, which is not true... I would like to think that we true. would we would Listen, express to our, all of you our out testimony. there in the whatever land. I'm not claiming that this actually happened. Okay, okay. We're just engaging in a hypothetical. Yeah, but I still beg to argue that a Christian man that's really de- understands the gospel and Jesus and what he brings us from, that people can look past that. I'm not saying all Christian men will, but there's Christian men that would look past sure. a gangbang. There's there's secular men who would look past it too. Right. But the point here is not whether or not they would look past it. The point here is whether or not it's unchristian of them not to. I guess it would... 
I, I don't, I don't, it, it's hard for me to say it's unchristian. I don't like that I said that earlier that, oh, he's not a Christian man, so I'm going to take that back. But I would say, like, it's kind of like the whole, um, I, I don't know. I, I would have to study back, study on it more, but I just know that there, it, it's hard for me to to think, like, if I'm looking even at a, at a potential husband and I look at him and for his past, that it's not my flesh talking and not the spirit talking. Like, it's just... If I really, if I'm really understanding what the who the Holy Spirit is and Jesus and being born again, it's like saying I don't want anything to do with you because of what you did ten years ago. It's like it kind of brings diminishes the power of the Holy Spirit and what He's done and the whole point no, of the gospel. He's not refuting that you're saved. He's not refuting that you're a Christian. He's not refuting your salvation at all, and is encouraging right, you right. on your pathway towards it. That does not mean that this man should in any way, shape, or form, stay with you. Even if he loved you based on the consequences which are current to your past. And I don't see a damn thing wrong with that. Sure. I mean, I guess I, I could I could see that. Like, okay. Uh, Can I, I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, just and this again. Is, the reason I bring this up specifically, and then you can comment on it. The reason I bring this up specifically is because I need you to know that there are women everywhere who are trying to make the religion of Christianity perverse and what I call a whore haven. And it should be. It should be a place for prostitutes to become reformed. But it should not be a place for prostitutes to become reformed only because they believe that it will shield them from criticism and that suddenly oh. their past will no longer matter. That is an absurdity. And that is a trend which is happening. And I believe that the exact type of gospel that you're <laughs> espounding on here is pushing people more towards that then would be pushing people more towards reason and an actual relationship with the Lord. Mm. Go ahead. Oh, mate, I kind of agree with that. My whole... Um, Wait, but your question, you were going to make Oh, question, my right? whole question was just going to be this. If we're talking about a hypothetical situation of forgiveness, wouldn't you want to be forgiven for the things that you've done in your past? Therefore, if you have a look at yes. the greatest commandment, one of yes. them is to love others as you love yourself. So I'm the chief would that of not... Yeah. I am the worst so, of the worst, the <laughs> scummiest of the scum. The well, we chief of all sinners is sitting right here. Thank the Lord yeah. that forgiveness is available for somebody like me. I'm still not marrying one of you fucking whores, right? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, and that's, I'm not saying you specifically. Yeah. What I'm saying is from the perspective of a Christian man who says that, yeah. What the hell would be the problem well, with that? My question then in the Bible as well, there's uh, the scripture about that gentleman that was actually forced to marry a prostitute. Um, I'm sure you know it a lot better than I do. But then what would Hosea? you kind of comment? Is that it? And Hosea. he literally was called to marry a prostitute yeah, and she's still sleeping around with people. And he, he was called to, to go, still love he her. He literally went to go so, get her. So yeah. I'm just curious <laughs> as to what your perspective would be on something like that. If you're saying that um, no, no, there's there no obligation. Be cases, yeah. Like there could be a specific case where via divine command you were called to marry a prostitute. I'm most certain that such a thing could occur. Hmm. But so what? So what? That has no bearing at all on whether or not it would be unchristian for a man who is devout, who comes across you and knows that you're devout but still knows the consequence of your past. Like, for instance, what if you yeah. had four kids from your past? Sure, yeah. your sins are washed clean. But does that That's mean true. that he has to deal with your four kids from other dads because right. your the sins are washed clean? Are still there. Hang on, hang yeah. on. Doesn't that seem absurd to you? I don't think anyone's prefaced this with obligation, but I definitely agree with what you're saying. I'm just asking hypotheticals in return um, for your opinion on them, but I definitely don't think sure, there's any sure, obligation in any capacity. It's possible yep. you can have a divine yep. command within the realm of logical possibility for all sorts of things. Yeah. But whether or not this is so doesn't mean that it would be unchristian for a man who is a devout Christian to push him towards marrying outside yeah. of his preference. And in this case, for a low body count yeah. or for a woman who has been chased, what in the world would be you know, wrong with that? Yeah, no, that's fine. I think that no one should be pressured or forced into marrying someone. No, like, I get that. But let's just take that same Christian man. Sure, he doesn't want her as a wife, but what if he were to say, yeah, she's she's still, she was a slut 10 years ago, then I still see her as a slut. I think that's what I'm trying to say. No, you can't, just because of what you did 10 years ago, that doesn't mean you're still that today because you are a new creation No, I agree with that. But you you're can not, have preferences you're not what you Listen, you're not what past. you were. 
you're not what you were, but the consequence of what right. you were does follow you. If you were yes. a serial killer and then mm-hmm. you become a devout Christian, yeah. can I concede that there's a possibility you could have salvation? Of course. But that doesn't mean I'm letting you out of prison. And yeah. if you're a chick who has 10 baby daddies, right, that doesn't mean a that a man is daddies. obligated or in any way to look past that because right. he's a Christian. You certainly agree that that has mm-hmm. to be true, right? Yeah. Sure, 100%. Nice well, then with Brian, back to Brian. We're going to ah. circle this all the way back, <laughs> right? How in the world, then, could you ever tell him that his preference for, but I fucked the guy right before you, I just won't do it with you, wouldn't have the meaning to him that essentially you thought he was lesser than the guy before him? He wouldn't. I mean, I mean he... Right, he wouldn't. Anyway, and with that, scene. I'll I'll, uh, yeah. I'll take Can a break. All right. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'll give you guys a couple analogies here. Uh, here I'm gonna give you a couple. Oh analogies. my gosh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this would be this whole like the girl. Oh, she, all the pre. And we actually we've had girls come on the show and say this. Recently, we had a girl say she was doing. Uh, she was going to Europe a bunch having fun in Europe, traveling in Europe. And when she was in Europe, she had no qualms at all about sleeping with the guy mm. within 30 minutes of meeting him. But then she's like, well, now that I'm back home, mm. I'm, I'm going to wait like a month, two months, three months before I have sex with a guy. <laughs> totally arbitrary, no actual reason, just arbitrary because she thinks that that will make her more likely to get a guy to commit to her, which actually isn't the case at all. But... Um, couple analogies here. The girl saying, well, all the previous guys hooked up with them fast, but you, I want to wait. It's like a guy saying, you don't understand. Those women, they're just for hookups. So of course I bought them expensive things and I took them to the best dining places and I even paid their bills. But you're different from them. I actually see you as a potential girlfriend, wife. So you have to wait for those benefits. So let's go out to McDonald's. You're paying, by the way. (laughs) Or, okay, here's another one. Here's the other one, okay? It's like going to a fancy restaurant. You're waiting in line. Everyone is paying $1 for a fancy T-bone steak. And then when it's finally your turn, you're informed all they have left is a McDonald's burger. (laughs) They'll cost you $1,000. How do you feel? Can I ask you a question? Well, I'd like an answer to my question first. From well, it's kind of like a, a rebuttal from that, what okay, you said. So you're saying that um, hypothetically your um, interpretation of if a woman is interested in you is if they have sex with you because if they had sex with other people and they're not having sex with you, that means that your value is potentially diminished. But why are you placing emphasis on your value being through sexual intimacy? Why couldn't it be that your value is actually placed in the fact that this woman is going, hey, I've done this so many times with so many other people, I see something in you. I want to cherish that. I want to nurture that. And I don't want to do that because I think that there's something about you that is different from everyone else. I want to get to know you outside of sex. I want to get to know you for you because sex places a false sense of intimacy with someone where if you take sex away, you actually get to know the person for their truest essence. So why wouldn't you be more special because she's not just sleeping with you, but she's actually going, hey, wait a minute. I see something in you that's different. I want to cherish that, champion that and nurture that. So I'm yeah. not going to have I have a you. response. So I have a response. So first off, that was actually Andrew's argument, not mine. Because I deferred to him on his Okay. So that's well, that's for you then. Argument. Sorry. But, but, uh, so let's, uh, let's condense it then. You can ask it this way and I'll answer it. Oh, okay. Well, then, to repeat the question. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it, but you heard the question. Um, I guess that's it. Why is the interpretation that uh, value is placed on the sexual intimacy and why isn't it built on a different type of foundation? And why does that diminish the man um, as being special because a woman doesn't want to do that with him? Well, wouldn't this defer to just cultural relativism? So let me tell you a story about the cum warriors of Papua New Guinea. The fuck? Oh, man. (laughs) This is the peacecraft argument. I'm going to explain this to you, and God help all of us as I do it. (laughs) This is the peacecraft argument for the cum warriors of Papua New Guinea. Now, there exists a tribe in Papua New Guinea where all of the young boys (laughs) have a specific job to do to become men. And I'm not going to get into it. You can infer it. Yep. Okay? 
because it's YouTube, and their but their job involves their mouth and, and men. Okay, the that's fuck? what they do all day long, and they load up with that. Uh, Interestingly enough, surprisingly enough, disgusting. No, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm literally so lost. It's it's a real thing. It's a real phenomenon. Uh, I think he'll make a point. I think he's talking about the context. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that when it comes to these particular, this particular tribe, the interesting phenomenon here is that there doesn't seem to be any trouble from these young men. Euler sees the pagan donated $200. Girl to them right of red dress. What if a guy with a past of essay women is now born or Gion? Would it be unchristian of you to not want to be with them? I was actually thinking about that. consequences. I was actually thinking about that. Like, you know, I wouldn't really date someone this. that I was a... Uh, <laughs> Petty, you know, pet, yep, the, we right? Know what you're talking about. Um, although that doesn't mean that I don't believe that God has the ability to change him and that he can have a completely different life. But yeah, I wouldn't. That wouldn't be my preference to go All date. Right. Thank you, the pagan. Appreciate it. Um, so, <laughs> that change, I, yeah. Thank you, pagan. Appreciate it. Uh, pagan. Back to that thing or whatever. <laughs> and, or yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Not not kidding. This is a real phenomenon. It's a real tribe. This really happened. So what it, what it reduces to is what's called cultural relativism. Hmm. So if there's no trauma for these young men who have to do this ghastly deed, and they have to do it on a daily basis, by the way, um, can you explain to me how you would go in there if they say, I love doing this, it's my favoritest thing, and explain to them why it would be wrong for them to do that? What? Hmm, I get your point. Um... Well, I guess my rebuttal to that would be we're not talking about people in Papua New Guinea. The context of what we're talking about is people in the West, and we're talking about this new age of sex culture. So it's kind of irrelevant to try and debate. Yeah, great. So how would you convince them that what was going on was wrong? Well, to be honest with you, unless there was a necessity for... Yeah, I think it's kind of a null and void argument, to be honest with well, you, I mean, because I don't understand... Uh, if you were trying to spread Christianity to them... Well, I never said that I was trying to spread Christianity. Well, I know, but I think that's when out of one about. side of your mouth you say that, yeah. to Brian, cultural relativism doesn't matter, yet he lives in a culture where promiscuity is absolutely heralded as being absolutely fine. Everything from feminism to what is now the modern-day pickup community mm. says that this type of promiscuity is mm. absolutely fine. And yet, when I give you an example of the most ghastly of deeds being culturally relativized down to your own prism, you couldn't give me a single argument for how you tell the tribe that they probably shouldn't let this occur? The only way that I could potentially see of going about that is, again, you'd just have to... Um you create a new culture. You'd have to educate people on what your perception of sex is, what healthy sexuality is. Um, it would start on an individual basis of saying, how do you feel about this? Is this something that you enjoy? Yeah, they do you love know it. there's an they alternative? Think it's great. Well, then they educating think that there's an great. alternative it's a right solution. It's manhood, not yeah. kidding. So it's as simple as that. I think if you can tell people that there's another way to do things, if they accept oh. that, like this, we're saying you don't have to do things this way. There is an opposite way if you take that choice. Amazing, but, but education. But your initial yeah. argument was why isn't your worldview grounded? on something besides this thing. So what I did was I gave you a yeah. worldview, which was not grounded on this thing, which instead was grounded on that particular culture. Mm. That's And so now you know that different worldviews can be grounded just based around the culture that they're in. You, you must agree that this is so, right? Absolutely. But again, I think from my perspective to change, I never knew that there was an, another way. And so I always thought that it was that way. And to have sexual intimacy, when I was educated that there was another option, I took that. So I think it comes down to, again, if you have the capacity to educate people uh, in a way oh, that says... Oh, fantastic. Uh, okay, well, why don't you go ahead? And I just can't wait to hear you educate Brian. So if Brian has a chick yeah. who is on birth control... Right? And they are in a committed relationship. Okay? They're in a committed relationship, meaning they're not sleeping with anybody except each other. Yeah. And they plow each other every single day in the craziest positions you can think of. I mean, he gets the anal beats out. He's having a good time with this, let's say, in this hypothetical. That's why he's having a ball. Wow, Explain wow. to Brian why what he's doing is wrong. Word. Hmm. If I, could I add, I don't think it's. Huh? Hard, it's Hang on, can you, can you let her answer? I think, again, the reason why I would talk about this is it would be a... It's a great question. The reason as to why I would wonder... 
it's a complex do, one. Do, 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 I know it's a complex do, one. Do, I would say, do you believe it? Do, so if do, I was doing do, this legitimately do, do, with someone, do, do, she's trying to answer. Do, 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 do. She's trying to answer. Oh, ahead, sorry, so ahead. if I was legitimately doing this with someone, the the process uh, that I would take is I would ask, do you see that there is a problem to begin with? And the thing is, if someone no, PC doesn't see, there's no problem. Well, then. Uh, He's having a ball. A... He's having a ball. There's no STDs involved. There's no pregnancy. They're in a committed relationship, just the two of them, and he is just having the time of his life, and so is she. Can't wait to hear the argument for why what he's doing is wrong. Can't wait. What is it? I think um, this is 100% personal, and you asked me what my argument would be as to why I think it's wrong, so it has to come from a personal perspective, and my perspective oh. is this. I believe uh, that every single person, and I don't care how corny this is, is precious and treasured and according to my faith I believe that doing something in accordance of a marriage um, is something that should be protected and championed and it's not in the context of casual relationships I don't believe that you should ever have sex as a form of the basis of your intimacy I don't think that you should see a woman as this thing that you can just pursue and the way to love her is just to have sex with her I think that every woman is extraordinary uh, and special and her body is one of the most precious things and the precious hey. like Agrees. Totally so, agrees. Your body, well, I haven't finished my argument. It's exceptional. Yeah, but they I haven't finished my argument. They absolutely each other. They're having sex every day. They yeah. think it's the greatest thing ever. They're having the time of their lives. He actually agrees, let's okay. say, with everything you just said. Yeah. That absolutely. A woman's body is her temple. He worships her. She's a goddess. I and she thinks he's a king. <laughs> and they're having he a ball. He bows to her. He bows to her. He's a little bit. Smashing every single morning, afternoon, and night. And they just adore him each other <laughs> tell me what the this argument is, exhausting. is for what it is that they shouldn't do that if he's not living his life, I mean, for me as a yeah, Christian woman, if I'm li living my life according to the Bible and I have those standards, those are my standards. If he's not lining up his life to want to have it lined up to the Bible, and like he it's doesn't simple think it's that. Wrong, you can't it's argue it. Simple. Yeah. If he's not the living Bible a life says course, that. You can't the force Bible? him okay, to I'll see I'll our uh, perspective. Uh, let me take over here for a little bit. <laughs> it's very simple. Like, it's right. not there's that complex there's scripture not, for it's that. It's actually not that deep. Yeah, it's the, really not that deep. If you don't agree, you don't agree, mate. If you don't have the spirit, you're not going to have conviction like we <laughs> it just is what it is all right why so would you want to change that i'll just go back to your argument so just to bring it back to this whole thing of well okay what i had said previously was we had a woman who came on the show yeah and she was traveling in europe and she had no qualms at all with just sleeping with men multiple men within minutes or hours of meeting them she came back to the united states she's back home oh now okay you know, two totally different viewpoints on this. Now that I'm back home, I'm going to make men wait. One month, two months, three months. I need commitment. I need a relationship. No religious reasons, mm. just totally arbitrary. And then two weeks after she has this new standard, she goes on a trip to Vegas. She fucks a guy within 30 minutes of meeting him. No real she actual Jesus. standard. Oh, okay, I don't you're care no, about that. I actually don't, don't agree give with a that. Fuck. I don't give a fuck it. about that at all, actually. I want to talk about this trope of, yeah. oh, women having like this double standard of the conduct towards men. And your argument essentially was, well, what if it's about that she really thinks the guy is really special and she, uh, you know, wants to value Well, herself. for your specific situation, I would say that it's a challenge of her identity because clearly that she falls back on her morals and principles because she says that I'm going to do this and then I do that and then I do this. So it would be a deeper conversation to have with this girl hypothetically yeah. on what is your identity, what are your morals, values and principles right. because clearly when you go somewhere else, you default on them. So that person actually doesn't have a lot of integrity would be the analysis of this person. No, so it has, they would, I don't think it has anything to do with You that. don't think so? No, I just think it's this totally arbitrary thing. Thing. She's traveling. It's like, okay, I'm just going to hook up. With I don't guys. think so. And I don't really care about it from that perspective. The perspective is, once again, to bring it back to the male perspective yeah. mm -hmm. of that's bullshit. Yes. I'm not going, like, that's unfair. So I'm going to feel a certain type of way about that. And because of that, I may or may not feel like you're worthy of, be of waiting for. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's totally sure. fine. Like as a man. It, the perspective is like, is she worth waiting for? Mm -hmm. And it seems evident to me really? if she's has this sort of two different standards that are occurring at the same time that no, she's not worth waiting for. It's one thing if it's always been your standard and you've had three long-term relationships and you made all of them late. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. But if you're gonna, you've had ten casual hookups and you slept with all, them all really quickly, and now you're coming to me and you want a long-term relationship with me, and I have me personally, I have no inclinations towards waiting sure. weeks or months to have sex. I'm gonna look at that and feel like that's a bullshit proposition. I'm gonna go date a different girl. Yeah, and it's you're simple playing as a that. game with yeah, me. It's, yeah, it's, but I just don't understand the logic of. Because you were saying, well, like, you, you're kind of, uh, it's like they reward the fuck boys who never give them commitment with immediate sex and punish the guys worthy of a relationship by making them wait weeks, months, or even until marriage. I think the reason why women do that is, again, there's a need uh, uh, for validation. And so if a guy is distant, if he's cold, if he's backing off, a woman therefore wants him, which is why these F boys seem to get the reward because they need to seek that validation and that reward of knowing, oh, they like me, they slept with me, even though they're hot and cold, where when they have the, um, the more solidified yes from a guy that's pursuing them, that's into them, it's this weird psychology which comes back to identity, I think, of I know he's there, but that doesn't fulfill that void of validation. But that guy that feels that void. So, yeah, I don't agree with it. Yeah, I'm yeah. just crazy, trying to but that's debunk how it. it. Is. That's yeah. how it is. Mm-hmm. So the girls are giving sex to the guys who are the least deserving. Which is a major problem. They're giving yeah. sex to the guys who are probably by their own estimation, the least deserving of it. They're not treating them well, et cetera, et cetera. And then the guys who are treating them well, well, we're going to wait. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a major problem. And I 100% agree with you that it's not right. And also, too, it even comes from a perspective of what was their... For me, what was what did you see growing up? If all they seen was maybe their parents or their aunts, uncles, whoever it was, get into those type of relationships, and they're like, okay, I want to be in these type of relationships too. It it honestly goes back to the way you grew up too. If you're around something so often, you're you're gonna attract that as well. Versus if I was never taught, I didn't grow up in a happy household where my parents got along and all that stuff. So it's like if I grew up seeing that, I'm like, okay, that's what I deserve too. If I never seen what an actual healthy yeah. Yeah. relationship's supposed to look like. I'm I'm probably not going to be attracted to that. And it sucks. Yeah, like like we said, it sucks that us women, sometimes we want to go after the bad boys. We want that validation. And it comes back to that fulfillment. It comes back to what all we've seen all our life. If I grew up 15 years seeing that type of relationship, realistically, I'm probably going to get into that relationship until I'm introduced to something new. And I get your perspective. Like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And we can't validate that. And if a man says, okay, I'm not going to wait for you, I don't. I don't want to be with you. Okay, awesome. For the girl, awesome. You're not the one for me. Cool. Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. It's not that hard. It's like, for that, me, yeah. at least in my perspective, um, it's very simple. Keep it's it. if he doesn't want to be with me, okay, cool. Awesome. Like, thank you for letting me know. Yeah. And no, we can he, keep does, on going. he does want to be with you, but you're essentially extending to him very different treatment than the way you've treated. I've, this is something mm-hmm. I've experienced with women I've dated myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll be like, oh, I want to wait, I want to I mm-hmm. wait, but they they're otherwise seem interested in me. And then if I just do even like a base level of like uh, questioning, have you ever had a one night stand? Yes. Have you ever had a friends with benefits? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Fourth date, you still mm-hmm. don't like, and it's just like this really weird look. It's her call. She doesn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. Totally respect it. Yeah. But I'm going to start feeling like you're playing a game with me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it just doesn't like... You're just playing a game. You're trying to leverage sex to get something from me or get commitment. And then I'm like, I just start losing interest because I'm like, okay, she's not interested. So I'm not interested then. Maybe I'll stick around a bit and have sex with her. But my once a girl's already started playing that game, I'm just already losing interest. Mm -hmm. These girls think, oh, if I make him wait, he'll respect me more. Well, not really because we actually, in my experience, all the long-term relationships I've had, we had sex First, second date. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. Do you let's do wait. Trauma bonding or what? How does it? Have no, to do with I wasn't going to say that. But it's, do you feel from what you're saying, you're if the girl, I know that she's had sex with other people, and then she's saying with me she hasn't. We get to the third, fourth date, she still doesn't. What that could potentially say is that's hitting a nerve for you. So wouldn't you prefer to look internally and say why does that actually annoy me? Is it because there's an insecurity within mm-hmm. me that that mm. brings up? And so when a girl doesn't, I feel that she has to have sex with me to validate something within me. So yeah. wouldn't you prefer to internally? look at why that bugs you instead of necessarily analyzing why the girl's not sleeping with you. And I think it's because men and women see sex differently. Yeah, I'm just asking out of curiosity. So, so okay. She, again, we've already kind of discussed this. Mm. But so you're saying the girl fucked ten other dudes on the first night. And then she wants me to wait four dates, five dates, 
six dates, seven dates. It annoys me, not because I feel insecure, but she's clearly playing a game and she has actually no, you know, there's no, it's just a totally arbitrary decision on her end. I heard this from a TikTok. I heard this from a friend. Let me make the dude wait, even, even though she would, she has no actual qualms with fucking quickly. Oh, yeah, that and makes this, sense. this scenario yeah. plays out all the time. Yeah. A girl will do this. The man will be annoyed by it. And then she'll just meet the next guy and fuck him immediately. So that has absolutely nothing to do with her standards. Mm -hmm. It's just, you're playing a game. Yeah. You're trying to leverage sex to get compliance from men in some sort of way. And so it's just, it doesn't frustrate me because I'm, oh, I'm rejected. It's just like, you're playing a game. Yeah. And yeah. there you're are women who do play those games. It has nothing to do with your values. Yeah. And it's just a totally different treatment. And like, how are you going to say you want a long-term relationship with me? Mm. You think I'm special? All those other guys, they just, they weren't worthy of a relationship with you, but you gave them pussy and I'm the one who's worthy of a relationship, but you don't want to have sex with me. Just, it doesn't compute to me. Yeah. It does not, it literally does not make sense. Yeah. That I, That's it. In that yeah. situation, I feel like it's true, but say she does have like this big switch and regrets her past promiscuity or whatever and she wants to like wait and she's not just going to do this with you she's going to do this with any yeah, other guy I know, from that there's on. no way for me to know yeah but you i never think know. like women like that they have their reasons they just don't know how to tell you without making you feel like shitty mm. as in like oh they want to just make sure you're a good guy because they don't just want to they're just afraid of like adding a body to their body count you know what i mean so i mean look on one hand yes it's better to change than to continue in your degenerate promiscuity but expecting a new relationship partner to accept less than previous partners got while asking them to put in more than previous partners put in, I think is unacceptable. I think that's even where the first problem is too. You're bringing your past relationships into your new relationship. Yeah, there's, there's going to be times where you talk about your past relationships, but if you're so caught up on my past relationships, like if you're so caught up on it, and you don't feel like this relationship's gonna work for you, or you feel like I'm leveraging this stuff on you, like like she said, there there is a switch for some people, and then there are women who use it as a leverage, and I can't fend for them because I I I don't know, but like you can't really sit here and be like, well, she had all this body count, and I'm le or not, I don't want to say that you said you're less, but you can't fathom or wrap your head around around it. But at the end of the day, like if you don't. You don't want that, then, then okay. Continue. Here, I'll give you an analogy. All right, so thoughts on this situation you've been in a situation with a guy for six months, you really like him, you want him to commit to you, but he says he likes to take things slow. Somehow, you find out that the last three girls he had a committed relationship with, he initiated the commitment conversation after only three weeks of dating. How does that make you feel, and what does that say about how he views you? Wait, say the last part again. Sorry. Mm -hmm. The last, the next one is you said he didn't have that conversation until after three weeks, like saying he wants to take things slow. What do you like not understanding about it or? No, he said he, that um, he wants to take things slow, but then you learn that his previous relationships he moved faster with, but he lied to you saying, I, I like to go slow when his history shows that he does not like to go slow. I mean, I would hope he had learned something from one relationship to the next, and if it doesn't, it's just going to be revealed, and yeah. then you make that decision if you want Wouldn't to Wouldn't you feel a little shortchanged, though? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm going to feel some type of way, but I'm not going to sit there and cry about it and be like, oh my gosh, he lied to me. Yeah, okay, if he lied to me, and this is something I'm not interested in, and he lied to me, he already broke that trust, okay. I'm all gonna... right, here's, a, here's another scenario, okay. There's been no changes at all to his financial standing. You find out that a man you've been on a date with and he took you to, uh, he didn't pick you up, made you take the bus. You met him at McDonald's. You find out that all his previous dates, he took them to three-star Michelin restaurants, paid for the whole date, but he took you to McDonald's and he had you split. But he only did that because, you know, he thinks you're the one, like you're worth like waiting for. Any anything? That's no. the only reason because he thinks you're worth waiting for. Yeah, like other he's like all like all the other girls. They didn't matter. Like mm -hmm. they they were just flings. They were just mm -hmm. friends with benefits. And he bought them gifts. He took them on trips. Mm -hmm. He provided. He paid for first dates, mm -hmm. roses, etc. But now you're 
you're the girl that he wants to be in a long-term relationship with. Mm -hmm. But because of that, you don't get any of those benefits that the previous women got. Mm -hmm. You know, just the girls that really didn't matter. They were just flings, hookups, whatever. You don't get flowers. You don't get dates. You don't get trips. But you're you're the w the girl who's worthy of a long term mm -hmm. relationship. Is that like forever? Are you just yeah. talking about in the initial dating phase? Yeah. Oh no, just a, just an arbitrary. You know, could be three months until he starts to do some of those nice things for you. Well, why would that potentially be a negative if the only reason, the specific only reason that he's doing that is because he feels like you're the one and he's waiting to show those things because maybe in the past he's done that too quickly with mm -hmm. people that didn't matter. Wouldn't that be a positive? No. In what, in what world does uh, providing to that level with a woman tend to negatively impact his odds of having a long-term relationship with her? Well, I don't know, she personally. Money. Can I ask a question? Yeah, I was going to say, how many women use men for that type of crap and then go right. on to the next one? So um, let's assume he did have a bad experience. Let's, I'll just grant that. Why would it be wrong for a woman to feel like, oh, he took all, the, he cared about these pr past girls way more. He did way more for them. He provided for them. I feel like chopped liver. I feel like... Why is he doing all that shit for girls he claims he didn't give a fuck about? Why is he doing all that stuff for these hookups and girls he doesn't care about? I'm his, I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> I'm the girl that he says that he's serious about and he wants more mm. and he wants it to have more meaning and he wants a relationship. Well, obviously he respects her as being a boss babe. Mm -hmm. okay, I don't even think it's that. I think it's just answers? already kind of like I said before, like bringing in those past relationships and how you treat other women. That's where comparison starts to come in. If I'm already comparing, yeah, but you don't like, think you don't think like if you you girls found out that a guy you're dating he never takes you on dates, never does romantic shit, but he's your boyfriend. He tells you he's a he adores you and cares so much about mm -hmm. you, and you're better than all the other girls he's dated mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. But you find out that he did all that stuff for girls that were just casual mm -hmm. sex yeah. hookups. Sneaky links, mm -hmm. and he says, "I didn't really, uh, you know, they were just fuck girls, whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't really care about them." Mm -hmm. You wouldn't feel a certain type of way, like why was he giving his these other girls who he used to date mm -hmm. all this good treatment, mm -hmm. gifts, vacations, mm -hmm. uh, dinner, etc.? Why is he giving it to her? I'm, I should be, I should deserve that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and after a while, like she said, like is it just the beginning phase? Like if it's that beginning phase, cool, awesome, and that's where healthy communication comes in. Is like, hey, like you know what to spend time with each other i'd like to go out to dinner expressing that too i mean and because sometimes no he's I'm, waiting until marriage yeah he's, he's i waiting feel until like a marriage. simple answer to this is comparison is the thief of joy yeah. and just that's it if you keep comparing you're just mm -hmm. gonna have your joy taken from you yeah you should never bring in your past relationship like you're, tell, you're telling happening. me as a woman if you were dating a guy and he never did anything romantic, he never took you out on a date. It depends, as we're hold saying. On, it, like, hold on. Uh, You're telling me, as I find comparison is the thief of joy or whatever. You're telling me, as a woman, if you knew, you knew verifiably that he did all these things for girls he claims he didn't care about, but he's dating you, he wants long term with you, never takes you on dates, just a homebody, you just chill, Netflix and chill, whatever. Mm -hmm. You, you, don't, you wouldn't feel any type of way? You wouldn't think, does he really like me? Because mm -hmm. why did all the previous women get this good treatment, mm -hmm. but I don't? I even think, too, my validation doesn't come in the things he does for me. It's the way he treats me in a sense of how he provides for me spiritually, emotionally. Yeah, and I get where you're coming from, like feeling some type of way about the way he's treating you. And that's where just communication comes in. If you want more, ask for more. Ask and you shall receive. Knock on the door and the door will be open. Yeah, no, he's, you ask yeah. and he yeah. says, no, I want to wait a couple months. A couple months to or start providing for you? Yeah, but. I want to wait a couple months to be a provider and to take you out on romantic dates. Let's just keep things, you know, like let's not, you know, do uh, do dates at all. Just come over and let's hang out. I'm not going to We could just you. be friends until then. We don't have no. to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, no, there's a romantic interest. I'm just, I don't want to do those things. Why would it? If she and really likes him, yeah. she'll look past it. Why would you wait for yeah. that? <laughs> like, I for think it's revenge? pretty simple. Is it like yeah. for revenge? What do you mean? Because, of, because the girl's not having sex or is it... No, bro. Okay, no. Well, no, we're not. <laughs> what a careful. I'm trying to like paint this like... The uh, male comparison of the double the, the male comparison of yeah. like, just to put it into your heads, like how you might feel if you found out that an ex 
or even yeah. like a casual fling that he had got this like amazing treatment yeah, from him no, and you as the girl he claims to really care about and want something long term mm -hmm. you don't get any of that treatment mm -hmm. you don't get gifts yeah. you don't get dates you don't get romance you don't get um, all these things you don't well, get providing for I, I, I think even you can protect yourself I think even. providing per, in, well, protecting I don't know but yeah, you can protect, until yeah. we're married, you can just protect for your. You can protect yeah. yourself. Stay quiet on this. He one. would have to show that in another way. Mm. Like, mm, yeah. he can't. He has to show that he cares in a different mm -hmm. way. Then I, I think his point and that's is where I go back to emotionally that he mm. cares at all because because yeah. that's that's the counterpoint of like for women it's withholding sex for men it's withholding that that visual or that emotional feels because that's what women thrive on. Women thrive on feeling that wantedness from a man and men thrive on feeling the physical of sex. So he, it's the double standard. Nobody wants a double standard and yet women are more willing to say, you have to deal with my double standards but I'm not going to deal with your double standards. I think it just comes down at the end of the day is to the woman's yeah. standards and her standards for herself, her standards for the relationship, her communication. And so yeah, I don't think any I woman think going into that. should really not that. provide at all until like a good three to six months in. I, I don't disagree. They sh a guy yeah. shouldn't pay for dates. You should just go 50-50. Yeah. You know, he shouldn't protect her, you know, until like mm -hmm. thir three to six months in. He shouldn't do really anything. I think women no should pursue well, No, okay, so see, I think like the roles as a, hum as a human, as a like protecting, um, providing, all the things. And then if we look at the, as a wife, honor, respect, it's like we're going to do that from the get-go, not just until we're married. But the whole sex part, that's just something in itself that comes back to being equally yoked. If you guys both know why. Yeah, but I'm if you guys don't, secular, if you guys are not yeah. unequally yoked, or if you guys aren't even in that, that frame, then... Yeah, anyways, I do have to move things on. Nick, before we go to Twitch, I do have a quick question for the whole panel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I kind of need to wait until she's back, so let me read.